Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our Student Welcome 2022. I hope you're all well and settling into your courses okay. My name is Steve Brooker, and I'm the Director of Regulatory Strategy at the General Optical Council. And I'm joined this evening by my colleagues, Marie Bumby, who's Head of Strategy, Policy and Co-Production, Daniel Hall, our Registration Manager, and Naomi Goldborn, our Investigation Officer. Our aim over the next 45 minutes or so is to give you an overview of what we do at the GOC and your role as a student within that. And by the end of the evening, you will hopefully have a clear understanding about what we do, what you can expect from us, and what we may expect from you as a student optometrist or student dispensing optician. Just to quickly run through what's on the agenda this evening, we will start by introducing the GOC, looking at who we regulate and our role in protecting the public. We will then show you a series of animated videos looking at our four core functions, registration, standards, education, and fitness to practice. Then there'll be a Q&A session, giving you an opportunity to ask us any questions you may have about the GOC. And then finally, we will tell you how you can keep in touch with us during your studies. Before we begin, a reminder that this is a Zoom webinar, so you're all on mute. If you do have any questions, please pop them in the Q&A box. You should see that at the bottom of the screen. Please don't wait for the Q&A session to do that. You can add those questions at any time and we will do our best to answer as many of them as we can. And just to remind you, we are recording all three of our student welcome events and one of them will be uploaded to our YouTube channel and circulated. We're not gonna record the Q&A session. So let's begin now with the first item of the evening. And that's a short introductory greeting from our Chief Executive and Registrar, Leonie Milliner. Hello, my name is Leonie Milliner and I am the Chief Executive here at the General Optical Council. I'd like to wish you all a very warm welcome to your first year of studies and registration with the GOC. We are the regulator for optometrists, dispensing opticians, optical students and businesses in the United Kingdom. And each one of you plays a key role in helping us deliver our mission of protecting the public by upholding high standards in the optical professions. Now, registering with us is a legal requirement, whether you're a student or fully qualified. And so you'll be registered with us throughout your studies and your career. And as you start your journey in the optical sector and with us, we'd like to help you understand what we do, how we do it, and maybe even demystify some of our processes. In this presentation, we will explain our role, our core functions and the different ways you may encounter us throughout your studies and career. So you understand what you can expect from us and what we may expect from you as a student optometrist or a student dispensing optician. At the end of this session, you will also have the opportunity to ask our staff any questions you may have. We will maintain contact with you throughout your registration with us, through our monthly registrant bulletins, through social media, and we will host another one of these roadshow events in the final year of your studies before you qualify with us. Our vision is to be recognised for delivering world-class regulation and excellent customer service. We believe that when we work together, we can keep the public safe whilst delivering first-rate optical care. We look forward to embarking on this journey together. So, who do we regulate within the optical sector? We currently register around 30,000 optometrists, dispensing opticians, student optometrists and dispensing opticians and optical businesses. Our duty as a health and social care regulator is to protect the public. This is at the heart of everything we do. And we do this by upholding high standards in the optical professions. And that means high standards in all that you, our registrants do. Our work ensures that you, our registrants, develop and maintain high levels of skill, knowledge and behaviour, which means that patients and the public can have confidence and trust in the optical professions. How do we do this? 
We maintain a register of those who are qualified and fit to practice, train or carry on business as optometrists and dispensing opticians to keep the public safe. We set the standards expected of you as a student, a fully qualified optometrist or dispensing optician and for the optical businesses you may work for in the future to ensure public safety is adhered to. We approve qualifications to make sure that the quality of education is at the right standard and will ensure that you have the right skills, knowledge and behaviours for when you graduate. We will investigate an act where one of our registrants fitness to train, practice or carry on business is impaired and patient safety may be compromised, such as when competence or behaviour falls below the standards we expect. We will now explain a bit more about each of these functions in more detail. So uh, as we said at the end of the slide, we're now going to play a series of short videos explaining those four core functions, registration, standards, education and fitness to practice. And we're going to start with registration. To study and practice as an optometrist or dispensing optician, you need to register with us. We keep and maintain registers of all students, qualified optometrists and dispensing opticians and optical businesses who are fit to train, practice or carry on business. We do this to protect the public. Anyone can search the registers and you can find them on our website www.optical.org. You will all now be registered with us and you must remain registered as a student throughout the rest of your studies. Once you have successfully completed your training, you will then need to register as a fully qualified registrant. If you fail to register or renew, you are breaking the law. As a student, that can mean you are removed from the register, that your final exams won't count and you may have to repeat years. The process for registration and renewal is simple and is done online via www.optical.org. Here are some things to remember. It is your responsibility to ensure that your details are accurate and up to date. So if you change your registered address or email, make sure you update this through MyGOC. It is vital when registering that you declare any criminal convictions, cautions or health issues that could affect your fitness to train or disciplinary issues such as cheating in exams or plagiarism. Remember, honesty is the best policy. You will need to re-register at the start of each academic year and this takes place throughout July and August. We aim to turn applications around in 10 working days once payments have been made and we have completed application and ID checks without any errors or omissions. Our registration team are always on hand to answer your queries. You can get in touch with them at registration at optical.org. Just as registering with us is a requirement, so is following our standards for optical students. These define the standards of competence, behaviour and conduct we expect from all registered student optometrists and dispensing opticians. You have a responsibility to uphold them to ensure the care and safety of your patients and the public. Optical students, along with other healthcare students, are subject to higher expectations than regular students as you interact directly with patients during your studies. The standards are designed to support you in learning and developing your skills and professionalism, not to catch you out. They will also help you to prepare to work as a fully qualified optometrist or dispensing optician. You will need to work closely with your tutor or supervisor to understand what the standards mean to you and how to apply them to your studies. As you progress through your course, you will develop your ability to apply professional judgment to your patient interactions and the standards will support you as a framework to do so. Again, your tutor or supervisor will help you in doing this. If you require further advice in following or applying our standards, you should always approach your tutor or supervisor first. If this is not helpful or there is a specific issue you wish to discuss in confidence, then you can contact us directly at standards at optical.org. Your professional association or membership body such as the College of Optometrists, Association of Optometrists and the Association of British Dispensing Opticians may also be a helpful source of information. 
Once you have qualified as an optometrist or dispensing optician, you will follow a new set of standards known as the Standards of Practice for Optometrists and Dispensing Opticians. Don't worry, the Standards for Optical Students will have prepared you somewhat for what we will expect of you as a fully qualified professional. We are always working to ensure our standards are as clear as possible and contain everything you need to know about our expectations. We have produced supporting guidance on topics such as patient consent, confidentiality and the duty of candour, which will support complex areas of practice or provide clarity if you are unclear or uncertain about what to do. Ensuring the quality of optical education is vital for public protection. This ensures that, as a student, you gain the skills, knowledge and behaviours you will need in order to practice your chosen career. We do this by setting the standards for qualifications we approve and undertaking regular visits to ensure providers of GOC approved qualifications are main maintaining those standards. This means that, as new optical professionals, you'll be equipped to deliver eye care services in a rapidly changing landscape and are ready to meet the needs of your patients. We have handbooks which describe the standards of education and training we expect providers to meet, which are available on our website at www.optical.org. These handbooks contain the requirements that qualifications we approve must meet, as well as the required core competences and the practical experiences that students must obtain in order to be eligible to join our register. During your training, you may bump into our quality assurance team if we are undertaking a visit and you may be asked to give your views as students on the qualification as it's important for us to get perspectives from different users of the system. Not all qualifications we approve will be delivered in the same way, but they all need to meet our standards. It is important to remember your education and development doesn't stop when you qualify. We also manage lifelong learning throughout your career through setting minimum requirements for continuing professional development and encouraging registrants to reflect on their practice for the benefit of patients. You will find out more about this as you go through your studies and we'll be coming back to tell you more when you enter your final year of study. One last thing. We have recently updated our education and training requirements for optometry and dispensing optics qualifications that we approve. Our new requirements will replace our current handbooks and will ensure newly qualified registrants continue to be well prepared for entry onto our register and meet challenges ahead. Following extensive engagement and consultation, we have published new requirements for qualifications we approve. The requirements are split into three categories. One for optometry and dispensing optics, one for contact lens opticians, and one for prescribing, which includes additional supply, supplementary prescribing, and independent prescribing. The requirements outline the knowledge, skills, and behaviours a student or trainee must achieve to be awarded a GOC-approved qualification. They also set out our standards for providers such as universities in important areas such as admissions, resources, curriculum design and assessment. Whether a student chooses to study a qualification that continues to meet our current requirements or a qualification that meets our new requirements, their eligibility for GOC registration remains unaffected. Our new requirements introduce several important changes to ensure optical professionals continue to be equipped for future roles and that qualifications we approve are fit for purpose. Over the next couple of years, providers will be adapting qualifications approved by us to meet our new requirements and must involve students, staff and employers in developing their plans. We will continue to quality assure programmes against the current requirements and review the changes being made against the new requirements. This will ensure that GOC approved providers continue to offer high quality optical education. For general inquiries about the quality assurance of GOC approved qualifications, please contact our education team via email at education at optical.org. 
For more information and how to download a copy of our new requirements, visit www.optical.org. One of the most visible ways we protect the public is through our fitness to practice function. It's our job to investigate and act when we receive information which calls into question a registrant's fitness to practice, their fitness to undertake training or their fitness to carry on in business. As you will now know, much of our regulatory work is concerned with setting appropriate standards for our registrants and ensuring quality training is delivered through approved education providers so that you are well equipped to deliver safe care for your patients. Any concerns we receive will be assessed against our standards and that's one of the reasons why the standards and handbook we have shared with you are so important. We are aware that the fitness to practice process may cause some fear. You may be nervous about receiving a notification from us or fear that you may be struck off for things that may seem quite minor, but this really isn't the case. As it stands, we have around 30,000 optometrists, dispensing opticians, students and businesses on our register and receive initial concerns about less than 1% of them. And less than 60 registrants will be referred to a fitness to practice hearing each year. We hope you'll be reassured to know that in the last year we only opened investigations against a total of six student optometrists or student dispensing opticians. There are many reasons why your fitness to train may be impaired such as academic malpractice, for example, committing plagiarism or cheating in exams, amending records or any other dishonest practice, inappropriate behaviour like violence or sexual misconduct, being under the influence of drugs, receiving a criminal conviction or caution, or experiencing any physical or mental health issues that could affect your ability to practice safely. So how do our investigations work? Our triage team is responsible for reviewing any concerns, self-referrals or referrals that we receive. The team will progress any complaints that could raise potentially serious allegations, while also identifying complaints that do not require regulatory intervention and will close them at that stage. If a case needs examining further, it will be opened and transferred to our investigations team before being presented to our independent case examiners, who will then decide what action to take. If they believe that it is likely that a concern could be proved and that it is so serious that a sanction may be necessary, it will be referred to our Fitness to Practice Committee for hearing. Our hearings are always heard in public unless there are private matters involved such as health or personal issues. If the concerns are found to be proven at the hearing, there are several possible outcomes and this will depend on whether the registrant's fitness to practice is found to be currently impaired. These can range from no further action, to conditions of practice, to suspension or erasure. Hearing outcomes are all published on our website at www.optical.org. Remember, it is vital that when registering or renewing that you declare any criminal convictions or cautions, any disciplinary matters you have been through at your college or university, or any health issues that could affect your fitness to train, and we encourage you to report any incidents when they happen. Honesty is always the best policy. If you have any queries or concerns about fitness to practice, please contact ftp at optical.org. So before we go, we just would like to remind you that our standards for optical students can be found on our website. And to see them, you can scan the QR code uh, that's on the slide or visit our website and just search for standards for optical students. And that should be the first result that pops up. The standards are available both on the web page itself, but you can also download them as a PDF handbook. Um, and then finally, some of our contact details, if you do need to contact us, including our email addresses, phone number and website. And if you do have any more questions that come to mind that we didn't get to answer today, uh, please do drop us a line. As you would expect, we're also on social media. We have Twitter and LinkedIn accounts, which are regularly updated with our latest news and content. So please follow us. So finally, I hope this evening has been helpful in giving you a greater understanding about what we do at the GOC, what you can expect from us and what we may expect from you as a student optometrist or a student dispensing optician. In the next couple of weeks, we will send around a welcome pack and that will include a recording of one of these welcome events written answers to questions that we've been frequently asked during these events, as well as standards and guidance that will be relevant to you as a student. So thank you very much for joining us. Good luck with the rest of your studies and good evening and good luck. Good night.